What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 22 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Mortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Aberesh has hunted down Astrogoth Iron Hand at last, acquiring that uh, coveted 15% army-wide missile resistance, oh, which should be very, very helpful as it is the biggest threat to a lot of our uh, halberd-wielding units, or the uh, infantry especially, but the rain or the uh, cavalry as well. A great defeat trade. Right? Now, in terms of what we got to do this time, or perhaps what we've got to think about uh, this time around, is where are we going we have to think about the end of the campaign and what our final goals here are going to be now Aberash himself has effectively completed his final goal in uh, doing the final battle and acquiring our a long campaign victory but obviously this is not a conquest campaign and while we could end it off on acquiring the last two library uh, quest battles which we do still have to do and there will still be probably some fighting to do because we'll also want to try out the units and screw around with the armies that uh, uh, spawn them in addition to completing those library quests so while we do that we need objectives and now uh, in my opinion uh, the idea of sending the abyssal revenant to uh, gain the galleon's graveyard is a good objective for him and then he can essentially while away at the end of the campaign on ulthuan depending on how many turns we have to do that. We probably should then give a essentially a quest to Wallacharkin and to Anarch as they both would have, uh, well, as the Abyssal Revenant has one and they do not. I think perhaps, and uh, you guys let me know your opinions on this, I think perhaps Anarch's quest could be Nagashazar and Wallacharkin's quest could be the Black Pyramid. So the Maelstrom, the Black Pyramid, and Nagashazar being three big loci of power uh, throughout the uh, throughout the lands, of necromantic power in particular. And that would be a massive final battle, essentially, for each of their armies, as uh, there's a bunch of uh, a bunch of stacks guarding each location. And yeah, certainly there's other factions down here, and we can get into a few fights, but uh, well. Uh, they can be on the way to acquiring those final battles. Aberash, of course, can continue running around acquiring defeat traits and doing what he does best, but he doesn't really care about the affairs of the uh, of the mortal world and uh, will probably, should probably, remain relatively aloof from all of these uh, uh, from all of these objectives. So, if you guys let me know what you think about that and uh, any other suggestions for final battles or final goals for this campaign aside from those library guardian quests. Anyway, uh, that's enough about that. Let's get started. I Speaking of libraries, Wallacharkin is poised to attack Lamia, and though they liked us, they uh, will not like us too much longer after this. Uh, we are going to directly de 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 We're going to directly declare war on you, Kalita. No. And we're going to take that library and we can take it at tier 3. Beautiful. <laughs> A nice laugh from Wallach. Now, we haven't seen Wallach get into a major fight in a while. I don't think this is going to be a major fight per se, but I do think that it should be fun enough to fight. So, now let's get going. We remember. Alrighty, well, you keep on remembering, Wallach. Here we go. It's been a little bit of a while since he got to play, but hopefully he can enjoy himself here. And they're going to start enjoying themselves up on top of those walls as our flyers head on in and absolutely rip apart and those poor skeleton archers. Low-tier unit, of course, and a range unit with a little melee defenses, so that's hardly surprising, but nonetheless nice to see. And the rest of our forces are going over the walls. 
Souls. We are not going to bother waiting for the gate this time around. Uh, Blood Dragon vets and Blood Dragon neophytes all up those ladders while our monstrous units break down the gate. That's a lot of cataphracta to move in once they're ready. Now, the enemy does have two screaming skull catapults back here, but we're going to head all of our uh, uh, all of our flyers at them, and we should be able to knock them out before they do too much damage. Let's see if they manage to knock any of our flying knights out of the sky, but it doesn't look like they will manage. Ooh, especially since the last two shots appear to have missed. More air for the uh, for the enemy screaming skill catapult crew, and with both of them engaged, they'll be destroyed within seconds. Very, very nice. Probably didn't even really need to send a uh, Wallach or, uh, or the heroes here. The other two units could have handled it just fine. Uh, the gate is nearly halfway through, but it looks like it'll be a little bit of a while before we get to it. So we're going to have to face off against some Tomb Guard and Hecaran warriors up on top of the walls here. Uh, but that's just fine. I'm sure that's just the way the uh, Blood Dragons want it anyway. The uh, veterans and uh, the neophytes working together as they should and we even have a few units that are not engaged over on the right side which means they'll be able to head down and hit the enemy uh, below the walls as soon as they're ready looks like there's a decent amount of splash on or uh, knockback rather on our infantry units at least i'm certainly seeing tomb guard flying off those walls periodically which ain't a bad thing I just wasn't really expecting it from uh, an infantry combat, but, uh, well, very nice to see. See what I mean? <laughs> Usually see that a little bit more with heroes than with uh, with infantry units, but, uh, well. And there's a bit of a troop disparity going on here, as our troops are clearly uh, vastly superior and to that of the enemy. Anyway, it looks like the gate has finally been broken down, battered down, and the cataphracta uh, make their way into the fray. And uh, it looks like there is a unit of Ushapti mixed together with those Tomb Guard to try to hold them off, but I don't imagine, and that's gonna go so well. Once again, you got to love these Cataphract uh, units. Uh, looking pretty fantastic, and I do love watching them work. If only the uh, monstrous units weren't so uh, so crazy expensive. At 1.1k Valor, it, uh, it just takes so much to get even a single one on the field, which is why we have relatively limited numbers. But keeping three to four per the armies that use them uh, is still, uh, well, still allows for some uh, great shots and plenty of work for them. Anyway, it looks like the breach around the gate has uh, widened quite a bit, and most of the enemies there have been destroyed, and we're able to move uh, deeper into the enemy city. Our uh, units of flying knights have been surrounding and destroying enemy cavalry units, and it looks like with that, uh, the battle will suddenly end. It looks like that might have been a desync ending, but frankly, the battle happened just roughly about as it was supposed to happen, so I'm reasonably happy with that anyway. Well, darn. As usual, the biggest issue with fighting undead as undead is uh, not enough time to raise your uh, forces back up, or at least uh, all of them uh, back up before the enemy fully crumble away. Anyway, we're going to raise, I guess, a blood keep here. I mean, it was Abarash's, uh, it was Abarash's home, so blood keep, I think it is. And we'll immediately build up this library, which on um, which will unlock the Ferris Jour Palace Guard units in four turns, uh, costing us eight precious metal. But we can certainly deal more Lord Recruit ranks as well. And lovely, though we hardly care about the. Uh, uh, we hardly care about the research rate at this point. We'll also immediately build the force gathering here for some defenses, as we obviously don't want Wallach hanging around if we're going to give him the quest to uh, capture the Black Pyramid and destroy the Sentinels. Uh, then, uh... Mm. Bow before me, Kerr. And he doesn't want to hang around here. I'm just thinking... Do we want him to go to the Black Pyramid, or him to Nagashazar and Anarch to the Black Pyramid? The thing is, Anarch's a lot further from the Black Pyramid. 
and closer to Nagash Zar. Granted, they're both closer to Nagash Zar, but this way they might be able to sort of reach it on roughly even ground, or at least at roughly the same time. Still think that's probably the way to do it. But anyway, uh, well done, Wally. Uh, we d <laughs> yes, yes, very amusing. Uh, we don't need to build anything else here. Okay, this thing keeps... Yeah, there we go. That was the last library captured. We just need to actually build the libraries themselves. So four turns for you and like 20 turns uh, for uh, this one. Because we need 10 turns for this. Okay, 14 turns and then four turns to build that. Really need that plague gone. Really, really need that plague gone. But anyway, uh, let's get moving. Zack, you I believe are headed to build ball, eh? Which you, by the looks of it, cannot reach this time. All right. Uh, if you go here, you can raise. Or raid, rather, for metal. Don't get any money out of it, but that's fine. Oh, I see Orion nearby. Hmm. I kind of wanted to kill him with Aberash because it gives us a... Uh, it gives us a speed plus 10% buff, but he's kind of far, and I don't think we're going to go all the way out of our way just to get Orion. Uh, Edmund, I guess you were going to... Not be able to reach Aberheim, eh? Alright, fine. You're going to go into raiding. Actually, no. You're going to go into channeling to heal up, and then you're going to hit Aberheim next turn. We'll get rid of it, especially as it is in range of the Bloodkeep library. I guess Carrick Norn and stuff is too, but these guys aren't actually at war with us. Not that I think these guys are a threat to us right now or anything like that, but nonetheless. Anyway, Anarchy, we're going to capture Karazakarak. So to Karazakarak, you shall go. And ah, Skarsnik's nearby, ah, but with basically no force and just the gobbos defending are not really a threat to us, so we're just gonna take it. A little bit of damage and mostly on our Bloodkin Thralls, we are going to occupy it as an Ordo Templarius Bloodkeep. At tier 4, which gives us another army capacity. Uh, very nice. Uh, we're immediately going to get the force gathering here, and the gemstones are not useful to us, so that's all we'll do. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a while before this thing can defend itself, but we can clear out the territories here. Now, the additional lord. Eternal Discipline, Tempered Fury, Eternal Discipline, Tempered Fury, and Eternal... Di oh, you got to be kidding me. They're all Eternal Discipline and Tempered Fury. Hmm... Disciple of perfection. Maximilian Jaeger, what do you have? Oh, you have Stoic of Violence, which is at least better than those two. I think we can start making a few stacks of, uh, you know, basic garbage units. So the problem, I guess, is that we'd want those garbage units to be Graveguard, because I really don't want to waste the uh, very, very difficult horde growth that we have, or population growth that we have, in our settlements on it. Which means we have to build them essentially out of Nuln. Oh, and actually, we want Nuln to be tier 5, if it ever reaches tier 5, to uh, get to the first Blood Keep, which would be lovely, but the growth is so slow that it's, uh, well, it's been rather difficult to get those anywhere near. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll ignore that for now. Heinrich, you, I believe, are near to another Orky army. And you know what? I certainly haven't had enough of this army fighting, so we're going to fight some more. Uh, could probably move, um, eh, get too late. I was going to say, move the other little army to help, but I think this one we will fight. Mostly because I want to see those Death Guard Revenant Haunters and the Oathbound Revenants and the Jade Ronin all in action. Just a little bit more. Go. Alrighty, here we go. I really enjoy watching this little army work, uh, especially since we won't be able to see it anymore relatively shortly in this form, as it is troops from two separate armies uh, mixed together. They're going to be separated into the All-Cav army and then the Ordo Profundum plus Eastern Vampires plus hopefully uh, Cathian Auxiliaries army as soon as we can get all that up and running. But for now, uh, 
uh, we get to enjoy them in the form that they are. Plus, they get to keep fighting against enemy uh, full stacks of orcs and such while the stack is not yet full. Meaning that the battles can still be uh, reasonably fun and potentially difficult. And we do rely on Black Knights in this army as well, who do once again look pretty darn fantastic uh, when uh, grouped together with the uh, uh, with the Oathbound Revenants to lead them like this. It's working for me anyway. Alright, and we're heading on in at the very least, uh, or we're heading around the enemy as we're going to loop around and try to destroy the enemy range units, the goblin rock lobbers, etc. Looks like these two rock lobbers are distracted around Heinrich, who has dropped down to attempt to kill the enemy orc war boss, but has been surrounded by piles of squigs and orcs in turn. I'm sure he can hold the ground, he doesn't need to hold it for too long as our stalking and death guard revenant hunters are getting ready to move in. Another the rest of our army is only slowly uh, making their way forward. Our infantry isn't all that crazy fast after all, at least not these guys. Only 30 speed on the Jade Ronin. So uh, that's quite slow. They're actually slower than orcs, which shouldn't be for a vampire unit, but uh, well, I, I guess uh, if nothing else, our armies, our units in this mod are powerful enough without uh, uh, giving our infantry a ton of speed, so uh, <laughs> gonna have to let that one go, even if vampires should and do run faster. Um, but anyway... It looks like the knights have done a pretty good job over on this side. Oh, there we go. Look at them all charging together. That's absolutely glorious. So those catapults, at least down here, ain't gonna fire. And these ones ain't gonna fire either as the uh, Revenant Haunters make their way in. Nice to see the Revenant Haunters fighting outside of that dark uh, map that we fought the Orcs in previously. Although I suppose at the same time that they were so visible in the dark map due to them being all ghostly and glowy like this uh, that, uh, uh, well, I suppose it doesn't matter. Uh, lots of effects coming in. I believe that's a soul stealer coming in from our lord who got a little bit damaged but also wanted to deal a little bit more damage. So, yeah, up to 25k after that soul stealer and the, the infantry blending that he's been doing on his own while trying to get at that enemy lord. Enemy army's in pretty bad shape with the bounce barrier, but 90% in our favor and our infantry are finally making their way to the fray. Although just as the enemy lord is about to go down. All right, and down goes... Nope, uh, he's going to get back up, though I wager not for too long. Especially as he'll get the back up, this time surrounded um, by vampires. All right, I'm going to assume that he got crushed there. Let's watch the rest of the enemy army get similarly crushed, but I do believe the battle is nearly over. Honestly, in this particular situation, I think the AI got kind of screwed by the terrain. It really doesn't get how to deploy on this particular map. I mean, uh, and definitely any time I see this map, the AI tries to deploy in this weird sort of formation here. And since it doesn't really understand the nature of choke points and stuff like that, it ends up screwing itself more often than not, rather than taking advantage of the potentially good terrain. Anyway, with that, we are looking good. I don't remember whether these guys were in March stance or not, but I think they weren't and just had to get a couple heals off to make sure that we brought most of our units back up into good shape. Great job to the Black Knights and Oathbound Remnants. All right, there we go. Enemy, of course, absolutely crushed. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the Jade Ronin participate this time as we did last time. Um, but at the very least, we did saw the Oathbound Revenants and their Black Knight uh, cohorts uh, do quite well as well. So, uh, still pretty happy about that. We have no purpose in using the other things. I guess we'll dual capped. It's only a tiny amount of XP, but, uh, well, we still do need XP. At least in this army, so and that works. Now, here's the question. Kolek, you are over here, in case that was unclear. Can we hunt you down with Maldred? He is going to run, but how far will he run? Can't have him raiding our territory after all, and he will run all the way over there. 
Okay, if you go into March stance, can you still be in range of him? Is the question. It looks like you can. Like so, I hope so anyway. And then do that. Wait. He's just out of range. You gotta be kidding me. Warrior of the Order. How weak links come on. Uh. <laughs> a lot of those annoying situations where we can't actually move j close enough because we're like a. Uh, really? Hmm. It looks like we can't. Oh, or can we? Maybe that did it. Okay, I think that actually did it. Uh, go. Or maybe I just couldn't see the. Uh, uh, I couldn't see the arrows. Yeah, we're fine. We're gonna resolve this because it's a waste of our time. It's probably gonna damage our black knights and such. Actually, not that bad. Now, poor Kolek, Kolek, rather. I feel bad for him now. Um, okay, well. Bonus versus large, another power stone unearthing rod, though those don't really matter all that much to us, so you two stick around. In fact, you can raid while you stay nearby. If Azag chooses to attack us, well, he'll get destroyed for his trouble. Though I suppose at level 25 he could have lightning strike and could kill Maldred, potentially. Is he gonna, though? We'll see. Somehow I doubt. Uh, alrighty, Zacharias, Rotep, and uh, Rudolf Barakamir. Yeah, you guys stick around. Still waiting for these guys to uh, be destroyed, but start moving back towards them, I guess. One of you will get deleted shortly anyway. Namely, Zacharias. I've been waiting to do that for ages. Now you can go into raiding camp. We still need metal everywhere. Waldemar, Rotep, you're in the same situation, at least until we can start building an army here, which we will want to do, or use the one that's planned to cross the mountains. But uh, either way, something needs to be done. From Hellstein, you are good where you are. Helman, Herman Skellen, rather, you cannot leave while this place can barely defend itself for the next two turns, even though you do run the risk of getting a plague. But we can always do the plague ship thing and uh, uh, send you out to sea if it happens we shall see uh, diplomacy and then end the turn unless there's a building to build be built of course and by the looks of it, no diplomacy and yeah I could probably pay the uh, probably pay the Cathians for this stuff they're not really all that close to defensive and other such agreements unfortunately but how much you want for this 4k go for it Let's do it. And 8k for the, Okay, fine. I mean, we're already kind of committed to trying to uh, get an alliance out of them. So that we have an alliance with somebody. And though, funnily enough, if many factions don't have an aversion to us, or surprisingly little. I mean, the Chaos ones all do, and the other vampires do, but uh, a lot of the other regular factions don't have nearly as much aversion as you might otherwise think. Anyway, building upgrade, Lord Not Mood, blah blah blah, and assigned initiatives, etc. Enter. Alright, Astrogod, disciples of Hashut, you are wanting to peace out. It depends on whether we're moving this way or not. I'm going to say no for now, but maybe later. And depending. I'm also a little bit worried that Archaon might be dead. Like, dead for good. And the thing is... Wait, let's see if we can spot his... Oh, wait, he's an undiscovered faction, so... Yeah, that doesn't really help. The reason I'm thinking this is thus. Okay, ready for duty, technology research, swell, the age of rage in Karazakarek. Uh, so, Boris Ursus is here. He has, as we last checked, I think 13 or 14 territories, and Zenbai Jin is currently experiencing a storm. It might be that uh, Boris Ursus has taken over Zenbai Jin and destroyed Arkans. Kind of hard to tell, but... Uh, I fear it may be the case. We're still going to send Conradine over there just to see if we can find him. We don't actually really care about defeating Boris Boka because the Red Tsar defeat trait is kind of trash. And not really... Oh, this guy came back. Uh, oh, because he can't see us. He wanted Fort Dwarslav. Oh, you poor little rats. Do we bother fighting you? Is the question. I mean, I suppose if we end up auto-resolving Kirig Doom, we could fight you. Well, the field battle is probably going to be more fun. Yeah, let's let's see what else we've got in the store here potentially, and then we'll uh, we'll do that. Ooh, actually, more importantly than all that, Abyssal Revenant, you you have a fourth sister, and we need to see you fight. This one we definitely need to see. So let's supply some of these skill points, and let's get on into it. Wait, hey, you have training maxed out. Good, good, good. Just had to check that. Let's go blade shield, and let's go. Hmm, I say cutlass. 
Get the bonus versus infantry out of it. And probably Scarred Vet versus Swashbuckler. Your melee attack is fairly high right now. Scarred Vet will help you in your Dread Sea Revenant form. And I guess we need to get everything anyway, so. They just get everything anyway, anyway. Uh, replenish. Oh, no, 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 no. Unnatural Force Incarnate, Disciple of Aberesh, and you get Honor in Death, though no terrible blows until the next level up, which should be shortly, fortunately. Uh, let's max out Replenish Troops and all the other stuff, and yeah. We've still got a lot of stuff for Dag and Ithaca that we need to move through. Then we're gonna fight this, I don't think it'll be difficult, but I want to see the Abyssal Revenant fight, and I certainly want to see the Fourth Sister. So... Uh, Banner of Lamia. Who do you go on now? I guess we'll keep you on the, uh, keep you on the empty dead. Away we go. All righty, here we go. We got more cool stuff on the field. Our first fourth sister uh, in the background there and the Abyssal Revenant as well. Wow, this would make a great screenshot for this. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I am very excited here about both of these things. I mean, yes, we've seen the ship before, but, uh, well, now we see the ship in action on our side. And we've got Elder Reavers below and Elder Reavers on the decks as well as we move forward and continue laying down fire upon the enemy army. I'm trying to get a trying to get a good angle on the ship there, and it fire away. Let's hope that that uh, smashes into the enemy formation. And by the looks of it, it did indeed. Great swords have lost about eight units and about 10, 15 percent of their HP. Granted, I'm sure that this will be uh, more damaging if it hits a bigger blob of units. And but for now, this works for us. We can keep bombarding and annoying the enemy while safe back here, and maybe even force them to come to us. This will also be the first time we're seeing the uh, Elder Reavers fight, unless I'm mistaken. It's a lot of new stuff. A lot of new stuff to check out. Oh, but obviously we really want to see the, uh, uh, the Abyssal Revenant fight. Man, what a great, uh, what a great model. Fantastic work. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, the enemy continues to approach. We've done a decent bit of damage here. Now trying to focus down those handgunners, as it's pretty critical that we do. And, uh, the fourth sister started with uh, less than half HP, unless I'm mistaken. And because, well, for some reason, when we turn the drowned dead, or the empty dead, into the fourth sister via the upgrade tree, they, uh, uh... It, it, she started with 12 HP, the uh, ship did, which was a bit odd. But it's okay, we were able to heal it up. Anyway, we start moving forward, but the Abyssal Revenant has this ability, this uh, storm ability. We'll then check it out later. It uh, forces him to sort of sit in place so he can't move while it's up and running, and clearly there, it didn't appear to be hitting anybody. All right, well, uh, the time for that is over, and damn, he is a big boy. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't even realize how big he was when he was back there. Oh, that's a lot of splash damage coming down on the enemy as well. Alrighty, and all with our ship covering overhead, firing down with both of its, uh, uh, both its crew as well as its cannons. And there we go, the rest of our army can uh, move in. I'm really starting to love this Ordo Profundum army now. And looks like it's another activation of that lightning call, thunder call, whatever ability from the Abyssal Revenant. He once again stops in place and is unable to hit anything, but lightning strikes all around. Hopefully dishing out some damage. It does take oh, quite a while for that to come down, though, so, uh, yeah. In the meantime, though, the enemy army has been pretty much uh, broken. The Empty Dead here working together with the uh, uh, Deck Watchers and... Or was it Ravagers? I don't remember which units that were here with them, but I guess it doesn't matter because the infantry have overrun the enemy infantry. I guess I was too busy watching the ship and the Abyssal Remnant this time around to see the enemy army get absolutely crushed, but that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Oh, 
So I also really like uh, watching units fight uh, beneath the uh, beneath this effect here. It really reminds me of that uh, final battle or that uh, uh, that unique quest battle for the Vampire Coast, where you're sort of uh, under the sea floor and you see the shadow of uh, presumably uh, Aminar overhead. It's pretty cool. I get some great shots of those. Just the lightning coming down, the ship overhead, the abyssal revenant just looking glorious. Ugh. I'm having a lot of fun here anyway, uh, but the fun has to end sometime, or at least this battle has to end, so and we're just going to chase the enemy down, well, everybody but the Abyssal Revenant's gonna chase everybody down, because he's gonna stop in place repeatedly, uh, and we can do that off screen. Yeah, I guess I should have really healed up those bloodkin thrall add up nights, but whatever. Uh, whatever, no big deal. A lovely little fight, and I gotta say, the uh, oh, with the fourth sister, our first ship hovering overhead, it adds a lot to the atmosphere. Absolutely in love uh, with this idea slash model. Now, on the abyssal revenant, I'm a little bit more mixed feelings i guess so uh, there is a bit of an no uh, let's take the dual captives right now uh there's a bit of an issue here so his call of thunder ability or where is it here terrible blows uh okay it's not here it's somewhere in his tree thunder call here it is uh so that uh, cannot move thing applies to him for quite a long time so he randomly activates this apparently when it's off cooldown and just kind of stops moving i'm sure this is great against some massive piles of blobs of enemies and stuff but at the same time it means he cannot chase enemy lords or heroes or enemies really at all and that's not great and on top of that just trying to get him into combat is quite difficult as well because he'll constantly stop and whenever a unit stops in this game and it's forced to stop it abandons all of its previous orders so you basically have to babysit this unit non-stop forever constantly reapplying orders to him and telling him to go somewhere which uh, not a big fan of personally uh, a bit of a shame there but he does look incredible hence the mis mixed feelings uh, just absolutely incredible and yeah i could certainly watch him fight all day maybe if we just like wait for the rest of the army just don't get anybody into combat just send the abyssal revenant in by himself for the enemy to blob up around him and only then send our army in it would be the better choice not entirely sure but yeah what a freaking incredible model but anyway uh enemy killed in battle yada 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 grave digger blah 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 there's that to obliterate the threat now successful that we were waiting for and the witch hunter threat has been reduced once more. Now, what we need to do is, well, we need to get another unit of the emptied dead in here. So I guess the question is, who are we going to let go to do this? I don't really, really want to let anybody go, but well, that is what it is. Uh, first of all, you're going to be a Depth Guard Sea Revenant, and you are as well. Finally get those snakes on the field. Now we could let go the two Bloodkin Thrall add-up knights, or we could let go... Hmm. Let me just see here. If we get let go two of you, we'd be at 18. 19 once we get the empty dead, and then hopefully we'll get another unit. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's the way to do it. You know what, let's, let's lose one of the Bloodkin Thrall knights. Uh, you. We'll make you into a Promethean... A reaver, so that there are three of you. Like so. Gotta be careful about that, uh, Marshal Valor. Then... Okay, Abyssal Revenant, I would like you to swap these... Oh, can neither of you move far enough? Looks like neither of you can move far enough. Alright, fine. Uh, we're gonna have to not raid for a turn, then. Go here. And then you go here. 
We'll send the Absorbent briefly to destroy the Fuming Serpent in the Star Tower real quick, but then we'll uh, move him out. Plus, he needs to build the hideout anyway, so it's fine that he'll take a turn like this. Go here and transfer to these guys the Bloodkin Thrall add up knights. Like so, and then move back into your own territory where I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, actually, did I click the wrong thing? Uh, yes, we still want one of the. Oh, no, wait. I was gonna say, yes, we still want one of these, but at the same time, we can't let go of the growth or forego the growth, so... Not really. Uh, recruit to order library units and then get that empty dead back up. I'd love to get a second ship, so we may get rid of another Depth Guard Promethean Reaver unit or one of these guys, but we have three Elder Reavers. I'd like to keep two Depth Guard Ravagers and then to have two Depth Guard Deck Watchers as well, just for variety's sake, so that's what we're gonna do. There we go. Two, two, three, three, two. Yeah, this is a nice army. It's a nice army indeed. And at least we're all Ordo Profundum now. The entire army has Vanguard deployment, though funnily enough, not as useful when we're, well, uh... Hmm. Actually, we can deploy the Abyssal Revenant forward by himself, Vanguard deployed, while the rest of the army waits back and allows the Fourth Sister to bombard the enemy. That might be the way to do it. Anyway, let's double-check whether any of our territories, any of our blood keeps are growing. Or need to be grown, however you want to call it. Hmm. Looking okay, looking okay. We still need those... Ooh, Jarna Grund is finished with this. Yes. The Cavalry Army is nearly here, then. That I'm also excited about. In fact, we should... Well, I guess we can't do it right now. Oh, wait. That was this turn. Oh, the Azag is right there. Do we just redeclare war on him and kill him off with these guys? I do see Huglug Backslider here as well. Mm. I don't think this warrants an actual fight, but uh, the Azag defeat trade ain't too bad, so this might be uh, a decent option. And yeah, enemies are just going to keep resettling territories near us. This is too tempting to attack him. Uh, just double check how recently did we peace out with him? Not recently. Okay, we're good. Yeah, works are gonna keep coming for Jarna Grun, but you know what? I think Abarash appreciates that. Uh, just an endless tide of enemies forever. Uh, and you go here. Declare war. In Abarash's name. Alrighty, and close to victory. We're gonna move the other lord in just to help out a teensy bit. And... I mean, I guess we could use Elki to gain some XP. You're mostly here to be a scout, though. And you're here to join the army. Yeah, you know what? Actually, Elki, go southward. And we still need you to uh, find where everybody else is going. Are you, sir, are gonna move right here? I'm gonna kill Azag. And damage to the army, but we can move back and heal up right after. It's fine. Uh, raise the place. We're certainly not gonna construct a blood keep there. And there we go. 30% spell resistance. This is so well. Uh, I'm already don't need that talisman of protection because we can get just something better if we should desire to do so, though we are also probably not going to bother with that. As I'm not sure you'll ever actually have an army. I'm just sort of going to be here. I doubt this guy attacks Jarna Grund unless there's another secret, like, three armies nearby, so yeah. Uh, Maldred, stay in and camp. Okay, I guess start building Bloodkin Thrall, add up knights, and damn, only two recruitment things. May actually have to use Abarash for this after all, as otherwise it's gonna take a long time before these armies are maxed out. Hmm. Not to think about it. Anyway, Wallach. Where do we send you? I see Libaras is nearby. We could just peace out with them if we wanted to not destroy them. How close are they to dying? Oh, they've got two territories left. Uh... If we destroy them right now, then there is no chance of Aberash coming down and killing them. And I was thinking of potentially doing that. Maybe Kairos, but definitely Scarbrand if we can get to him. I mean, really what Aberash probably would like to do is kill off all the most difficult lords, which would originally have meant uh, Archaeon, but if he's dead... And by the looks of the fact that Boris Ursus is not at war with them, it looks like he probably is dead. So that leaves Bellacor, Tyrion, Scarbrand, who also be very, very strong in a one-on-one. -on -one. Krogar would be strong, but... Mm, probably wouldn't stand that much of a chance against Aberesh. Kairos would obviously stand no chance against Aberesh in an actual uh, and direct fight. 
I'm just looking all over the map, seeing who could potentially give him a, a run for his money. Malice Darkblade, is, when leveled up, is very, very strong. Or Sarkhan is, but uh, yeah, there's some potential there. Uh, Reinhardt, I was going to have you kill off Balthazar, well, not kill off his faction, just his uh, little army here, because you want the additional armor from Metal Storm on your relatively weak uh, units. Ow! We're gonna have to manually fight this. Okay, fine. Fine game, we'll fight that then. Uh, let's level up and then let's jump into it, and then we'll continue thinking about whatever else it is that we're doing. Now, Reinhardt, you only need to buff these guys and the Ordo Templaris monsters, so you have the buffs for them. Uh, let us get the... So, the Exotic Dead would give us ward save for the Forsaken Circle. Yeah, so the Exotic Dead, a death, definitely Undeath Resurgent, definitely Mentor. Mm. A leadership, Weapon Strength, and... Weapon Strength? Wait, 6% Weapon Strength for 3 points? That's terrible. That is atrocious. That's not worth getting. Even 10% Weapon Strength is kind of meh for 3 points. And compared to 9 melee defense, this is really not something we care about. Uh, I think this might be a bug. Or not a bug, or an oversight. This should be 6% ward save, shouldn't it? Uh, Wallach. Inner Circle Ordo Dracona, 6% ward save and 10% weapon strength. Yeah, that should be ward save and not, uh, and not weapon strength. Because otherwise, why would one be 10% and one be 6%? And yeah, see, we got 6% ward save in the Abyssal Revenant's Ordo Profundum version as well. Uh, all right. Minor thing, but it does mean we don't need to spend the points there. And I forgot where we were. All the way back. Uh, all the way back here. Let's keep applying the points, though, I guess not these ones. Is there any other useful trade? I mean, we don't have a lot of these units here. 9% weapon strength. We could do the missile resistance. I'm just thinking for the um, for the Draconov Templar Sky Reavers, which make up a decent portion of this army. Missile resistance would be nice for him. Might be better than the weapon strength. An extra 10 weapon damage is not going to be all that much. Yeah, let's do the missile resistance. Like so. And then we'll start putting points into, you know, his actual fighty tree. Or, wait. Would it even be better to ignore this and head towards Follower of the Path, Ordo Templars, Winds of Magic, Power Reserve, Martial Valor, gain a little bit of campaign, movement range. Gain even more Martial Valor from this. Or we could get Lightning Strike. In fact, of any army that might want Lightning Strike, it might be this one, because it's uh, relatively fragile, so that's certainly something to consider. You know what, I'm gonna hold off on putting those points into this line. Let's start making him a fighter, then. Uh, quick blood for you. Alright, and then we haven't leveled Mr. Rabe Gearhoff. Not the only Rabe around, but one of them. Uh, mentor for you, and... I guess we make you fighty as well. Foe Seeker. Definitely Blade Shield and pop one point in the Scarred Vet and Deadly Onslaught. We could get Gaze of Nagash, but I I will continue more or less ignoring it. Get another point in Scarred Vet. More HP means more effective HP, and due to all the healing that we have. Albrecht Nictus has already been leveled and has returned to us after being hurt. Uh, do we want another... I'm wondering whether we want another Sky Reaver here. I mean, we probably want about two more... But we don't necessarily need to right now, and I want to max out the other Ordo armies first, so let's do this. Oh, we're close victory and low casualties now after all that leveling, eh? Interesting, but still seems to be worth a fight, so away we go. I imagine so. The weak have been perishing for uh, quite a while now in this campaign, and I don't imagine it's going to stop anytime soon. Anyway, here we go. Balthazar Gelt holds off the, uh, well, our assault with a full, st well, a full garrison, uh, plus his own stack, which we'll see how effective it all is. And ooh, some Knights of the Blazing Sun stand against us here. 
And then we'll see how they how effective they are against the Abyssal Terror Knight and our our uh, big armored bats. Plus, we're gonna debuff them with that Blight Swarm on them, dropping their melee defense down to a mere 11, which is going to allow our monstrous units to work through them all that much faster. And that said, our monstrous units don't have to necessarily do all the work and this time around. I decided to send all of the monsters over to the leftmost flank, and they are absolutely uh, ripping the enemies here apart with a little bit of minimal support from units of Bloodkin Thralls. There we go, coming down to make sure that those- oh my lord, that's just brutal. <laughs> Getting crushed between two units of, of, uh, uh, of these, uh, the Draconov Templar Sky Reavers. Absolutely brutal. Not a great day to be an Imperial, uh, Imperial Infantryman. Anyway, let's see. Back here, Geld has been found by our Lord and has in fact been pretty much killed off by him. But unfortunately, Geld is only level 7 uh, due to the fact that we've essentially been destroying his faction since the very start of this campaign. Not non-stop. Not really allowing him to level or do anything. Down he goes once again. And I guess we're just going to keep bullying him. As I was saying earlier, though, on the rightmost side of the... Or on the right flank, or on the right side of the... I don't know, right entrance... To the enemy settlement, we did not send our monsters, and it is simply a brawl in between our bloodkin thralls. And this is what I was talking about: not necessarily letting the uh, uh, the monsters do all the work. We are holding off some units back here. It was mostly originally used to uh, keep the crossbows from firing upon us, but it looks like it's going to keep a few flagellants and some swordsmen and whatnot off as well. Anyway, the brawl continues. I'm sure our flyers are continuing to absolutely wreck fate where they are I see a double bouncing uh, uh, double bouncing wind of death out here and just out of curiosity yeah 15k damage and 94 kills and nothing too crazy to be perfectly honest could have done better with that one I figured the uh, multiple bounces from wall to wall would do better but uh, well that's okay at the end of the day if the uh, wind of death doesn't clear the enemies our troops will and perhaps it's better to allow them to do so anyway we gotta get them their battle experience. Although I guess that these Bloodkin Thralls will always remain Thralls. Occasionally evolving into... Uh, and to Drakenhop Templar Sky Reavers. But this is the Thrall army and it will remain as such. Plus, they are as buffed as they are likely to be uh, in this campaign as this army buffs them the most. Well, actually, we have a few techs that we can still get them to buff them a little bit more, so uh, it'll climb a little bit higher. And by it'll, I meant the, uh, the stats in this particular case. Anyway, our lord comes down into the uh, big blob of enemies while the brawl continues over on this side and on this side as well. Flagellants in decent numbers here facing off against the Bloodkin Thralls. Two sort of uh, frenzied units that we have armor and the enemy doesn't. And on top of that, let's see, just out of curiosity, if I can select a unit of flagellants, their armor piercing is at a mere 10, so while we're not the heaviest armored infantry, this is still going to be very difficult for the flagellants in particular to deal with. Now, unfortunately, this side of the battlefield is shrouded in darkness. No, I'm sure that makes the vampires feel that much more at home, so, yeah. Anyway, the brawl continues as we uh, chase down runners and uh, range units here with our, uh, with our bats, and once again... <laughs> Wherever the monstrous pile of bats goes, it's just an absolute horror show uh, for the enemy. The fact that they're so, uh, they're so much bigger than the, uh, the infantry are... Just dropping down upon them. And the fact that they're armored as well. It's all, it's all very, very frightening. Thunderbolts and lightning. Wait, this isn't the Abyssal Revenant? Ha ha ha. Anyway, anyway. Uh, balance of power is at about 90% in our favor. I'm not sure Gelt managed to really do anything in this particular battle. As we uh, swept on down with our Lord, cast the Trickster Shard upon him. Uh, the enemy, I mean. So that he had a difficult time and then killed him off pretty quickly. Or at least wounded him, I guess. 
I still wanted Aberash to defeat him because Aberash would get double the uh, double the armor that other lords would because of his uh, Aaron Duelist plus and the Metal Storm trait. But at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. Plus, Aberash's force, unlike this force, is uh, mm, very heavily armored, or more heavily armored, I should say. And these guys could still definitely use the additional armor. Anyway, the enemy is still fighting. It's quite impressive. We're up to nearly six minutes of just straight-up brawling, at the very least on the rightmost part of uh, the enemy uh, settlement. Which is impressive. It is taking the Bloodkin Thralls quite a while to break their way through the enemy. And, but we've seen similar things with this particular army before when we fought the, uh, uh, when we fought the Vampire Counts. Hardly surprising as it is a relatively basic unit in this army you know, that we're using still, though finally it looks like the enemy army will break, or at least most of them. The flagellants will fight to the death, so they have to be completely obliterated, but now I don't really mind sending in a few of the batty boys uh, to help. And so yeah, um, pretty darn good kills on Albrecht Nictus here. He does seem to do pretty darn good whenever he uh, whenever he joins the fray. Whenever he doesn't get randomly wounded by a much weaker agent. And uh, yes, I'm still salty about that. <laughs> and it looks like Albrecht might be as well, considering what's happening here. Anyway, a ton of effects come down. Spirit Siphoning, Storm of the Night, I believe, a Melkoth's Mystifying Miasma as well. Just stacking everything we can to get rid of this final flagellant unit in order to let the battle end. We can't even really see what's going on in there, so I'm just going to speed it up and allow the battle, though a good battle, to end. All right, I like that. That actually turned out to be a uh, a very enjoyable battle. The fact that the Bloodkin Thralls don't kill nearly as fast as our Ordo infantry do and make for these great brawls, even whether it be against the undead, as we've seen a few times with this particular army, or whether it be against the Imperial living, including the state troops. Uh, we did take some damage, but we healed it all back up as needed. Most of the damage dealt was by our various units of, uh, well, uh, monsters, but by the looks of it. And let's see, 11k on the Crimson Tide, so well done to you. It looks like they and the un one of these unnamed units of oh, Bloodkin Thralls, or two of these unnamed units of oh, Bloodkin Thralls, got the most kills and damage. So great job to them, especially being nearly on par with most of the uh, Sky Reavers and stuff. Though the Sky Reavers do continue to outperform the Forsaken Circle and the Abyssal Terror Knight uh, due to their numbers and thus their superior capabilities of infantry blending. Uh, we're going to to raise the place and there we go we got that additional armor which we wanted we are also technically in range of draca i wasn't necessarily hmm is this worth fighting i'm not sure but let's uh, let's take a look around and see what else we've got before we, yes, before we commit to anything first of all zach you're still headed to bill bali that has not changed at this time and there's nothing there. Oh, that's interesting. I honestly thought it would be full of Skaven, but it was not. Okie dokie. Well then, you are going to go into encamp stance and start moving over here. I guess we're on the way to Magritta to borrow and whatnot, but actually Magritta being full of chaos corruption might be destroyed as well. Well, either way, we gotta cast, cast the rat house down, so we're heading to Skaven Blight, hopefully before they get another blob over the mountains via the uh, underway stance and unto Castle Carcass Sun. Uh, Aberash, you were going to... Is this worth fighting with your army? Honestly, I don't think it is. Path beckons. Let's face it, he'd obliterate this army and they would stand no chance. Uh, they're in march stance, especially. So I think we'll let this one go. For hopefully some more difficult battles in the near future. And take them out, please. Another Dawnstone, and we cannot reach Karak Doom, so we will go into encamp, heal up, and then hit Karak Doom next turn, which is these guys' capital anyway. 
All right, and that'll give at least another turn for Conradine to move around and see if Archeon is here. If he is not, we'll destroy Karak Doom, then we'll head down through the canal to hopefully find and fight a Grimgore Imric, who's quite strong, Scarbrand, and then whoever else we end up getting to before the end of the campaign. Now, who can else... who can else... <laughs> Only you can else. Uh, who, who else can move? You have mentor, yes? You do not, but you should, because everybody should be leveling everybody up. And also, with all these black knights and stuff, and these exotic dead, we should level them up. And uh, now we don't have a use for any of these things, because it's all black knights and graveguard. I guess we'll go first to the fight thrall aspirants, just in case we end up replacing them with a few thralls. But I don't think we're going to get any uh, Templaris units with these guys. Or with this army in particular. So it's the Exotic Dead and then Undeath Row. Oh, we can't reach Undeath Resurgent, but that's fine. And none of the final tiers buff the uh, Grave Garden anyway either, unfortunately. But it also means we don't have to spend points here. And we might be able to get Followers of the Path Ordo Templaris. Since we don't really have that on anybody else. Now, I would like you to besiege Aberheim. And I'd like to see if these guys are willing to give us a field battle, so you just besiege them and stick around. We'll see. And that'll also leave it to future ruin us to deal with. Uh, <laughs> Anarch, you would like to head to the Forest of Gloom, but it looks like we won't be able to reach it for a turn or so. How many territories do you have, sir? Seven, so quite a few. So we can freely, freely raise Varenka Hills and then probably get ourselves a nice big fight here. Village had a very tough fight at the Forest of Gloom in my Archaeon campaign. A very, very tough fight. Uh, so I expect great things from these little creeping death forest gobbos. Two Varenka Hills. And there's Skarsnik. All right, Varenka Hills right there. We'll uh, resolve this as it's not worth fighting. Four losses, irrelevant, and we will raise for metal. Stop moving, stop moving, stop moving, stop moving. All righty, Headman, Headsman, whatever, Earthing Rod, great. We'll pop into encamp stands here. And, oh, you can't reach Karazakrag from here, can you? No, I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. So we'll move here, but we do have to be careful. As the place can't quite defend itself as yet. Uh, we don't need the horde growth in this army, and I think we have everything that we need in this army, so we don't have to build anything. Which is great for Anarch. Hmm. We also do now have a decent amount in the way of martial valor points. Uh, still can't level up the Crusaders into Inner Circle Knights as yet. These two, I mean. I can certainly level these guys, though. And that'll max out the army. And I know, I know, it'll basically be all of our martial valor, but nonetheless, I like all the Ordo. Oh, yeah, we'll have to redo it again. Uh, I like all the Ordo armies maxed out. Alright, you. Bloodkin Thralls, two. Sky Reavers, not Revenant Haunters. Ah, it's still. Oh, we have too many Sky Reavers. Damn. I was not expecting this. All right, how about you then? Uh, we'll raise you two to be uh, knights. And cap is too low as well. Well, with these guys, at least I was planning to swap these guys into these guys and then these guys into these guys. All right, fine. Just just wait a few, to wait a little bit until leveling. I'd rather not waste the additional eight hundred or whatever on the cap. Well, actually, we have no choice but to do it for the monster unit. But uh, we can wait on the knightly unit at least. We are still very heavily gated by the uh, by the Valor, after all, to the point that I haven't gotten the free, well, free, uh, the army capacity plus one, just because 4,000 Valor for that is pretty darn steep. Right here. And that'll give us the ability to build another Sky Reaver, and most likely we'll need to do another one if we want even more Sky Reavers. I'm almost tempted to keep it to two and just get another Templar Warrior or... Hmm, because we'll want another Sky Reaver in this army. At least one. So maybe we'll just keep it to two here and then just get another regular veteran warrior. Do we have capacity for veteran warriors? We do. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a veteran warrior, just a regular warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, we'll do this, we'll do this. Yes. 
Do, do we not have a razor stand? Oh, there is one. There is one. For a second, I thought we didn't have one in this army, but we do, and that's just great. Uh, Edmund, you can continue besieging. Let's lich more. Waldemar, Ratep, you're all looking and good. Maximilian Jaeger, you are going to start building Graveguard. Many, many Graveguard, and it's going to take you like a million turns to do so, but, uh, well, we've no choice in the matter. Uh, Vermont Bachman, you're fine where you are. Herman Skellen. Stay where you are as well, Rabe. Ooh, so. you've nearly reached. Oh, well, every, every time, every time he talks, I just think I love the way he talks. Uh, yeah, you're forward. on Face the approach. And, prove thy worth. and Elki can maybe try to find Grimgore. For Aberash. Jay Damio, you are still crossing the mountains, and hey, if you find Greasus, that might be fun, though I don't think Greasus stands any kind of chance against uh, Aberash. Uh, we'll do a tech. Last time we did Favor by the People for the additional armor for the Drakenhof Templars. Do Death Pact, which helps the Templars in particular, but nah. I think I'd rather start moving down this portion of the tree. I don't really care about Fatal Fixation or Favored by the Realm, but Assimilation buffs all of our Thralls, and Mighty Cities buffs defenses for everybody, plus the ward save, which is great. Only one defending, mind you, but it'll help our... Uh, it'll help our defensive territories. The other option would be to go through these things. I mean, we do want the alien weapons in the Templar's Feast, though, to be fair. And this one's right there. Alright, fine, fine. We'll get this one because it's right there, and then we'll see. We also have the uh, special skills for all the uh, for all the special lords, or the, uh, well, they're not lords, they're legendary heroes, that do various different things. For example, this one is Devastating Flanker for Enslaved Revenant Knights. Honestly, it's not all that worth our time, to be honest. I mean... Eventually when we'll get it, but it's not a big enough skill to uh, make that much of a difference to that army. Anyway, uh, do we have time to fight another battle? Not really, but you know what? We're gonna... Uh, let's just attack Draika. Oh, she's probably gonna run, isn't she? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Let me think about this. Maybe she will fight. If we declare war on her... Wait, wait, wait. Go here. Let's see if this works. Go here. Don't attack this. We won't be able to chase her down, but whatever. Uh, then we'll declare war on Draika. Which makes me sad. Hmm. Minus ten. Hmm. Hmm. She doesn't have a particularly good defeat trade or anything. It's not like she'll join our war or anything, and we're not going to give her like 40k or 50k for this. On the other hand, it does... I'm just wondering, is there any alliance benefit? I mean, yeah, we could get malevolent tree spirits out of her armies, but honestly, it'll probably take so long to acquire the allegiance that it may never happen anyway. It's probably just not worth our time. And therefore, we'll declare war. And just for the fight. Then, if we attack Needling, Draco will come in as a reinforcement. One more really quick fight, go. Alrighty, alrighty, one more battle. I guess this is going to be the fifth battle in this episode. Oh, this is going to be... Oh, the editing, the terrible, terrible editing. But what can I do? The stupid manipulative mod knows I love Blood Knights and is stupidly fun. So what What am I supposed to do here? Anyway, here we go. Again, completely necessary battle. And down come the bats upon the enemy Imperial formation, who we hope to destroy before the arrival of Draika's forces. Can't underestimate Draika. A, because, well, generally speaking, she's quite strong as are her uh, treekin and uh, treemen and dryads and whatever uh, beasts of the forest she chooses to bring. The uh, 
Uh, the Wood Elves under Draka in particular also have a tendency to stack massive amounts of leadership reduction, which uh, would probably work better against the player uh, than they would against the AI, though they do work quite well against the AI as well, despite uh, the massive leadership cheat cheats. So uh, we gotta watch out for that, and the potential for our units to just suddenly start crumbling away and due to loss of leadership in combination with those leadership reductions. Anyway, the Imperial Army here is is pretty much done for. Spirit Siphoning going to be active on you too. Not that it matters all that much. And we're going to make sure to chase down those units that are still uh, routing and not shattered. Obviously the Imperial units are part of the enemy settlement, which means we do want to shatter them. But afterwards we no longer have to give chase because they'll be destroyed afterwards anyway. While we're doing all this, it looks like the enemy reinforcements are moving on to the field. I decided not to send all of our Bloodkin Thralls that way, and it looks like we're going to take a volley uh, from the Arrows of Kurnus as we stand here. Looks like three units of Bloodkin Thralls knocked out with that. One per each arrow of Kurnus. Makes sense. Alright, so what do we have here? A Manticore, a Feral Manticore to be specific. A Malevolent uh, Tree Man. I see some Malevolent Tree Kin out there. There's some uh, Wolves, which are in incredibly strong. Their stats make them seem weak, but they're just so, so good uh, when uh, when in Draka's force. And there we go, Draka herself moving in. She's got Dampen on her spell resistance and removes magical attacks, so actually quite uh, nice on vampires. And we also gotta remember that uh, we uh, do have physical resistance, but all of the forest spirits do magical damage as well with very high melee attack. And very decent armor on Draco's uh, Malevolent Dryads as well, so yeah, definitely gonna have to watch out for all of that. On the bright side for us at least, she is only level 12, and I believe this is a regular Malevolent Tree Man, so we're good with regards to that, at the very least. All right, and Abyssal Terra Knight working together. Still fantastic model as well. Uh, working together, especially under the lighting. Uh, working together with those Bloodkin Thralls. Just wanted to get a, a nice little a slow motion walk uh, for this guy. All right, and we'll get you some action here somewhere. Uh, over on the rightmost flank is where the battle against Draka's forces will begin as she sends some cave bats together with those giant wolves in uh, to probably try to annoy our Bloodkin thralls. Fortunately, our bats and Albrecht Nictus himself are still over on this side of the map, and thus they should be able to destroy those units. No problem. Looks like the Manticore moves in to aid the bats and aid the... Uh, uh, aid the... Uh, doggos, but that is a little bit too late as both of those have already routed. Here come the Dryads to join the fray against the Bloodkin Thralls. While several of our units are still giving chase to the uh, uh, to the Imperials, they should be coming back either shortly or already are. I don't really want to look away just to check. But rest assured they're coming back. And there we go, rest of our units are uh, joining in now. There we go, this is a Bloodkin Thrall unit returning, and yeah, see, there we go. They're coming back, and here come uh, the bats. Looks like we are starting to take damage, and the units are rampaging as well. You've lost about three units, you've lost four yourself, and about 25% a quarter of your HP. Gotta be careful there, as the Feral Bears have hit the flank. The flank usually the most dangerous, and no exception in this particular battle. And Drake is having a nice little duel against uh, uh, a Reinhardt Van Hal here. He's still looking to be in pretty good shape, and in fact, Draka will back off rather than fight directly, sending in by the looks of it and the malevolent Tree Man, as well as some Dryads to deal with this. Oh, interesting that the Tree Man decided to sort of walk around where it, the Dryads wouldn't interfere with it. Huh. Ooh, nice knockback on our, uh, on our skeletal griffin as well. 
But anyway, while we will bring down the skeletal griffin, I'm sure this is not the time for it. And we will uh, and try to go after Draika instead. The Abyssal Terror Knight has arrived back into the fray and is going... <laughs> it's looking to sort of walk forward menacingly. Uh, this guy is going to be targeting those feral bears which have been causing havoc on this particular flank. We have been healing them up reasonably well though and... Okay, they're still losing HP and units, but we're getting there. And Draka is escaping, but not so well now that the for uh, not forest, uh, the uh, Storm Knight is upon her, together with Melkoth's reducing her speed to a mere 24, and that's despite the bonus speed she's getting from Foe Seeker. Alright, and looks like here is where Draka will return. To the land and there we go yes yes with that best girl goes down but alas uh, the battle is not over as the tree man arrives to avenger uh looks like he's still pretty much at full hp so that little contest is gonna take a while while we overrun uh, the enemy dryads and overrun them we do as the balance of power is about 95 percent in our favor the tree can of course are the last to hold in the enemy line and it actually looks like the tree man will rout rather than fight to the death although routing will lead to its death anyway so <laughs> there we go the rest of the army is destroyed and the tree man will book it on out of there now draka's army is not part of the settlement so we should probably take the opportunity to uh, destroy them all but we can do that off screen All right, not a bad a little fight there. We actually started losing quite a bit of the Bloodkin Thralls on our right flank during the main portion of the fight there due to a combination of, I guess, the uh, Super Dryads and the uh, Feral Bears hitting that flank. So good job to uh, Draka's army, at least, uh, for that. And the Malevolent Treekin for holding on for quite a while, as they did. But otherwise, we are good. Gonna raise the place. So Draka's army will run, I don't believe we'll be able to chase or will we ah, if you hadn't moved <laughs> oh well i tried to stop him as fast as i could immune to ethel lore and attrition well i guess if we send somebody after the wood elves it could be you reinhardt though i fear that that would be very difficult for the bloodkin thrall army in particular uh we are going to i guess pop you into channeling stance not that you actually need to heal here it's just that you can't raise or raid rather so what else would you do vlad is still alive as well so unless we were to peace out with him I do not bandy words with the weak. Which we very well could. Just to allow him to stay alive and uh, maybe reclaim some territory. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But either way, we're out of time and I'm calling the episode here. Next time we continue advancing right. towards Skaven Blight and at least for now, the uh, final campaign goals as I've decided upon them. Though, once again, I am open to suggestions, so don't forget to leave those likes and comments below and let me know what you think for the ideas for the uh, finale of the campaign and what it is that we want to achieve more blood dragons to come don't forget to leave wait i just said that all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching